and hello everybody and welcome back to Crusader Kings to a very very exciting episode once again what we need to do now is first of all um, we do have now a few options with the expansion but what I also want to do is I want to create a new title because as we, as I said we want to subjugate my uh, my southern enemy here he's pretty strong so we do need to call in an alliance with that um, that costs me a lot of prestige. If I want to take all of that at once so that he becomes my vassal, I do need a bit more prestige. Creating duchy titles only costs me a bit of money, of which we have enough, and we can create a new title and get, especially what we can get, is we can get a lot of prestige out of that, right? So we get 666 prestige now. This makes it possible for us to now go at war against this guy here, so Tore, who is my southern enemy. He's got a, quite a big territory there. And we do have the once in a lifetime option of subjugation. So we can take him. Um, and if we win this war, we would take all the primary titles and he would become our vassal. We would thus with one war, we would be able to expand the whole south here. Before I do that though, however, before I unpause the game again, or well, we're having it at the lowest speed right now, is that we are above our domain limits by quite a bit. And yes, we are. Now, um, in that case here, Iceland, we are, it's far away and it belongs to us. So we should just give it to someone who is actually loyal to us, who might be loyal to us. We do have a few options for that. I usually like to give it to some, to some old people that are not married, that are not having any lands or something like that. So the title stays within my realm. Um, and this guy here, Olafur, sounds just perfect for that. To give him the title, he's also in my council. So this makes it pretty good for... Um, decisions that we could then have and I could give him now the chiefdom of Vesterland, right? So he would become my vassal and I would actually lower my um, domain limit there basically, right? So we got the vassal and so that he doesn't become too ambitious we should also give the other county to some other vassal so that he doesn't have the whole of Iceland there together and becomes too powerful. So there once again we should have the option now of getting us someone. Um, this one here has actually some heirs which is also not the worst thing. So as long as they would stay in my realm but let's just see this guy here um, is still unmarried and also has no children so I might also give him the title of the Australand as it's called right so Australand becomes the vassal then for this and we does have lowered our domain um, domain holdings there once again with some very weak vassals because they're old have no children are not married in that case they wouldn't object to anything that I do basically um, now we have the prestige and I would really like to go with this step here now of subjugation. So subjugate Jarl Tore. Um, he's inferior though he's got two allies there. One with a thousand and um, one with 500. I have um, 3000 myself almost and I could call in two allies with uh, 1000 each. Right. So since we do have enough prestige, what I want to do is before we go to war, I would like to increase the size of one of my armies once again. This one here, the Armored Footman. This is increasing my army size even more. And we still could give one holding to someone else. No, let's wait on that for now. So yes, let's go for subjugation. I can't put it away there forever. Um, and I like this one. It's a once-in-a-lifetime choice that we have there, um, and we can thus declare war on him with our armies against his. Now, one thing that I want to do real quick is, first of all, we're moving, of course, our gathering points here down there. And another thing is that we are now calling upon our allies. So, allies, our chieftain, Frick, Fyrick here. This one here called to war. It should not be that expensive. 75 prestige, very good. And my second ally, Magnus... Uh, call to war another 75 oh he's on the side of the opponent well, that's pretty strange let's raise my army there and I hope I'm not overreaching here nah Holstein is too weak right let's wait until the army is fully gathered and then let's go to the ocean first. Um, Chieftain Furig captured Jarl Tori's son. Oh, very nice. We got the son of the Jarl already. And now, oh boy, let's get over there and attack. Even though we do have 
the the problem of coming from the ocean we still should have the upper hand here because our army quality is better and as we can see yeah this is not even a not even a, an equal battle there what's happening and before we actually took his main capital we are already at 77 percent and tyke comes of age my other son i do have a few sons some of them are dead some of them are coming back now. And my steward, Chieftain Olaf, has slain my nephew in this honest brawl. I demand a satisfaction. Who is that? Oh, he's first of all in Scotland. He's pretty weak. Um, and my steward... is pretty weak too. But I'm not giving up my steward. Um, whatever it takes. Um, he will bleed for uh, plead forgiveness. Or good one, Olafur. Let's say good one. <laughs> because he's weak and whatever he wants there, or whoever, whoever he thinks he is, no chance there. We actually won this one rather quickly. We can enforce our demands now. So you get the Aldom of Eogal Filk and you gain 350 fame. We also share 350 prestige and all the hostages taken by the war participants will be released. And look at that. With one war, we have gotten the whole south of Norway and we have thus expanded our territory quite significantly. Let's lay down my army there to get rid of the penalty for the prestige. Um, I think I've also lost my spy master there. Um, I do have a vassal though who demands a position. He would be a very good steward though. So we're going to make him the steward for, oh here my steward who is also my vassal there and the other one my spy master. He's got 14 spy points anyway and he likes it much better than this. I'm not answering any call to war. Um, we can now go back with the marshal to improving the control of Sogn. Because in our home capital we already have the maximum control now, right? Yep, 100. Um, and in Sogn it's important. Down here we have now this one here, Chieftain Tore, who absolutely actually doesn't really um, resent us that much, right? So we just took his freedom and he's still pretty, yeah, normal towards us. We might actually ransom some prisoners from him. I think this might be... Oh, the spouse. And I think this is the son, right? We would actually get 100 out of this one. Yeah, let's also do this. The war is over anyway. That's a lot of cash we're getting out of this one. And with that, we can also get another martial perk. And let's go for sappers. So this is increasing our... Um, siege rating and after that we can already finish the first tree here which would be the strategist and gives us another big martial skill bonus of plus three um, and also we can cross the waters without any penalties which is just a big gain overall um, in, in this regard now let's just check i do have such a bad wife when it comes to managing the domain so this is not something that um, is particularly nice to me other than that we have also pretty much a lot of piety coming in now so next up on my list would be this guy here. So in my area, right? So we had the alliance there, but I broke it because it was only the betrothal. And now we could conquer it, right? He's pretty weak um, and we only need three more counties. So of course I need to rush for these three counties be before someone else gets too strong in this regard. So let's declare the war there. I don't see any problem with this. He's got weak allies overall. I got strong allies. Um, and in that case, he's vastly inferior. So what I'm doing now is I'm moving my army down here, uh, up here, and raise them, of course. We should be careful, though, about the prestige level of where we are right now. So that's it. That was a very short war and a good one at that. Lucky us. So we can disband our army again quickly or wait a second we could also start raiding and have a look around if we find something to raid because this will also give us some nice prestige there and yes up there is actually something and they're pretty weak too or we just take them we rush them as well um, and get to the king title as quickly as possible we also got a commander once again very good because we had not most of it um, that we can use now in our army as well and we can also ransom someone insignificant. We could also create a new duchy title of Prendalog. Um, in that case, sounds good. We are going for king anyway, so it's fine to create another duchy title. It's a bit of a risk because I'm hoping I'm not dying before that happens. Um, and we do get the 300 prestige that we 
want basically thanks to the war that we just won um that pushes us up to 200 there again i still need to disband my army though because it's costing me quite a lot of prestige and yeah we do need to we do need to get our controls up there in the counties so let's have my marshal working on improving control in song once again um my steward still continues with the development here um and my Chancellor goes now for foreign affairs, which um, is increasing my prestige per month there a bit. So we are actually actually positive for now, right? Um, that is a good snap. Another thing that we need to do is we need to give some domains away. So, for example, we have now my area here where I am the, the holder of it, but I really don't want that. So we might actually just give it to someone and I'm actually thinking about Tyke, my second born son actually he's my third born son but he you know the firstborn is um dead so we might actually give him this title there um in my area so he's just becoming the chief of it and he becomes my vassal with that and there he is he's still in the house of scold so he still um works towards our well our renown and our fame level so this is fine and if my current heir dies well, then he becomes my heir. And in this case, he we will play as him then. And basically, it's all staying within the family um, in this regard. Right? So we are now down to these holdings there. I still really want to fight someone um, to go for the king of Norway. And yes, I want some more easy counties um, to become the king. Um, up here, we have another very, very strange county named Numdela Filki, which I can actually conquer quite easily. He's got no allies, really. He's got no sons. Um, he's pretty weak overall. I, it's a wonder that he actually survived that long on his own. Um, let's raise my armies once again. And by the way, do I have two rally points here? No, I don't. And yes, thanks to the war, we got another experience point. And I can now go for the strategist trade after all. So this gives me another martial boost and thus makes my armies stronger. We also gained the trade strategist. Now I can really focus on the overseer to improve the stability of my counties, which is very much needed once I am king. Now, um, my daughter can also marry this one. He has the genius trade, but he's pretty old. Well, perhaps he's got it in him. Let's just win this one. There it is. And we can thus enforce the demands and also take this territory into our control. So it's only, we are now only one territory away from the king title, as far as I know. Yes, only one de sure county we are away. So it's one of these guys here. Um, and there we got another very weak one. So hello, you sexy, how is it called? Chieftain Herrick. And yeah, well, you're gone now from this game, or at least, well, you don't are or you no longer are the chieftain here so let's give it to me thank you very much for that let's disband my army there real quick so we get um rid of the prestige penalty um and yes well we have now the choice of actually becoming kingdom or king of norway this is something i was waiting for or well this is something that we had to rush towards because once we have the kingdom title um the our counties are get, no longer getting separated with our death, right? So our son will become the king. Um, the duchy titles, of course, will be divided, but it all stays within. It all stays within the um, basically the king title or the kingdom itself, right? So this is a pretty good one. And now this is the exciting thing about it. So the kingdom of Norway, and we can thus create it. And this actually didn't take us that much time. So Jarl Bjorn, it's still the first generation. He is our quick strategist who is a bit one-legged. Um, and oh, okay, see, and uh, he's one-legged. And even though he's one-legged, he's going to be the first one-legged king. He's going to be the first king of Norway and the first one-legged king at that right away. Um, but still, quite a nice um, career for Jarl Bjorn. Um, let's have a good look at him once again as he's a normal Jarl. Because now he's becoming a king. And this is pretty pretty tough there for him as well, I guess. We're getting a lot of prestige out of it and 250 gold we have to pay. And thus, we are now a mighty king. And lo and behold, King Bjorn of Norregor it is um because that is how our kingdom is called at the moment i would like, like to change that but still it's king bjorn now and in that regard he has a crown isn't that nice let's just have a look outside there it is norigar i would actually like 
I would actually like to, first of all, tribal authority, we can't do that yet because our Norse culture is not high enough yet. There's still someone else and that is the King Hising Bjornsson of Sweden. He's a bit stronger still, so he has 24 counties, where I only have 15 counties. So he's at the moment pushing the technology, right? Um, but we might actually go for this then as well. So Kingdom of Norregra it is. Um, and thus we are now consolidating our empire. So having a son now who is a bit into fortune building might not be so bad. So in this case, um, in this case, should we kill our firstborn son? I mean, should I really be that bad? Or I could also disinherit him, right? He would be not so happy about that. He gains the trade disinheriting and he loses 75 opin opinion of us. It also costs me 300 prestige. So it's really expensive. But I have a kingdom now. I have a lot of counties. So if my next heir is going to be a fortune builder, it would be really good for our general development since the fighting itself might be over now. Right, so, and as the first thing of my action as king, what I'm doing is I'm going for raiding. So this is what we are about, right? We tribal Vikings for the moment, as long as we're not in any other department. So raiding it is. First of all, though, before we go for raiding, I still need to give some counties away there because I have way too many holdings, right? We still have, do we have all the islands now? Given away, the Orkney, yep, that's all away. My hometown, so Hjatland will still um, stay with me, but the rest I can give away, especially up here, Norigra, so Bodin we have, right? So this I can grant to someone that is perhaps close to me. So we got Sigurd still. So my firstborn son actually has no titles yet. Um, I might give him these titles there for now, so he becomes my vassal in this regard. We have Bodin up here. I'm actually inclined to give him two at the same time. So I'm at my domain size again. Um, he gets really powerful there, but he also becomes my vassal and he's my son anyway. So we have the son bonus there um, for the moment running. So there he is. And as we can see, even though he's not in the council itself, he loves me for it, right? So we do have um, him at bay there for now. And I'm also now within my holding um, rights of what we have. And what we can also see is that I have a really good income now and a really good prestige income there as well. Thanks to all of this. We're also in line for two titles that we can inherit. So this is basically the lands that we just given out to our sons. So in this case, we might um, get them back if they die unexpectedly. Who knows about this? And yeah, it's all about the raiding again. Raiding is all the rage at the moment. Um, let's have the rally point as far down here as possible. Niklas has claim on, my co on the county of Volpe. Wait a second, Volpe is not in my... Oh, he's in my court. So I could use him, I could invite him to my court and could claim um, his claim or I could, um, you know, claim his claim there down here and fight for him and thus make him my vassal in my empire, but I'm not doing that now. Um, we are in for the raiding. Let's raise my army as raiders. It's a bit lot, it's quite a lot. And it's quite a lot of soldiers that we have there right now. So um, with this also, we would need a very high supply limit. So what I could do in this regard, I could split them, right? So having two armies makes it a bit easier to move them around. Um, and even half of it is already 1,900 soldiers. And this should be enough for Ireland, if there is something in Ireland. Um, or also here in... Wales and wait a second we also have Asturias down here and Asturias is pretty weak right got an ally uh, the Byzantine Empire is an ally but they're not going to help when I'm go going out for raiding there so actually what I can do is let's merge them again and move overseas down all the way here first of all Brittany yeah Brittany is also pretty weak so we actually going quite south there now for some raiding in Brittany there so France some nice territory we see here. And also here in northern Spain, um, some beautiful territories, right? That we can raid like that. Let's march into... Oh, wait a second. Wait, 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 wait a second. That was pretty close. With a second there, I was marching into France, which I should not do. I want, of course, going into uh, Brittany there because that is rather weak. And what I can see, though, is that the supply limit of these counties is rather high. So I can keep my armies together for now. Right, and there's actually 21 coins waiting for me. Um, the delegation... What is that? Slowly files up my private chamber. Um, what do they want? Ah, uh, they want once again that I repair their, their walls. 
for something. I could pay them 50 coin. Um, or I just say no to that and Sogon gets crumbling walls. But who is invading Sogon anyway for quite some time? So let's just keep it to ourselves. While we go on for raiding. This is looking really good here. There's the capital. Let's raid the capital. This was quite a lot of money. We're still in Brittany, right? Yep. So we can still continue down here. Ah, uh, we should be careful now. The supply limit is rather low. So we're losing a few soldiers there, but it's fine for the moment. Um, yeah, I'm going in here, take it, and then right here where the supply limit is better again. Once we've taken it over there before I lose anything, very good. Um, and then we go out into the ocean again. This is really successful here right now, though. Um, my wife has informed me of an obscure law in the chieftain of Pelamurk. That is one of my counties. Um, that states none but the king may be its protector. Normally, such an archaic law would be dismissed. Archaic? We are in the archaic age. But it offers me a unique chance to put Chieftain Tore, my vassal and current ruler of the chiefdom, in his place. He hates us. Um... The law is clear, the king has full rights, we get an unpressed claim on this one here. Um, and Chief Ntore, in this regard, um, loses even more opinion of us. Problematic. We could also say um, he can keep the title by my grace and we will get a bit of stress and improve our reputation with him. I like that much more. I like to keep the peace now in my kingdom. Right, let's get out there to the ocean again. Um, we have raided 147 coin. This is quite fine. So this is a nice loot. And I'm actually inclined to go home with that. Um, to take it with us. Because it also means that I have 147 coins and prestige. Um, that I take home with me. My spies also have informed me about a hunter causing a ruckus at the local tavern. The man has been spending large amounts of gold. Bragging loudly about the great deal he has struck with a fancy lord in pearls and silk. Um, we could use this and we would get more vigilant scheme resistance plus eight or we say he be, should be in prison no let's just say thank you for your attention now let's get back home with all the treasures thank you very much for that and there we have it already so we have 800 prestige now and 300 gold coin we also got a new perk that i would like to use right away on my overseer um trade so as we can see, army gold maintenance sounds pretty good too. But let's go for the hard rule right now. So another 20% dread gain. And also revolts are being um, fought down much faster than before. So this is something we can do. Um, and on the other hand, should we go out raiding again? We could still replenish our supplies here for now. So this is going up as we can see. And then we go out again. We also, as we can see, captured some prisoners that we can also release out there. Fine so far, the raiding king, quite a lucrative life that is.